Hello and welcome to our special services at home program introduction. I'm here today with the CMHA family support option staff. The coordinators of this program are Julie Bergworth, Lisa Romeo, Colleen Scott, and I'm Jennifer Gleason, manager of children's services. Our agenda today will be to give you an orientation to the special services at home program, an overview of what you can and can't use your funds for, some of the temporary exceptions that we have currently due to COVID-19, our invoice procedures, other important information, and if you have questions at the end of this, please feel free to connect with your coordinator. I'm now going to turn it over to Colleen Scott. You would refer in your handout package to the this form, as you can see at the side, it reviews family support options and our role with families. So Family Support Options offers a range of supports to families who are caring for a child up to the age of 18 with a developmental or physical disability living in Wellington County. Also for children with a designation of medically fragile, technologically dependent. And the program is funded by the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services. Thanks, Colleen. I'm Julie Bergriff and I'm one of the coordinators and I'm happy to be here today. So. Uh, this we're going to review this handout next and it's in your package of information and it should be on the left side. Um, I just want to say before we get to this particular handout, um, you're going to hear us sort of say and you're going to see a lot in this presentation, the term SSAH. And we love acronyms and short forms in in our work, of course, and SSAH is just the short form for special services at home, which is a very common short form used in our field and with regards to this funding. Um, so I uh, just wanted you to sort of know that piece. Um, so when you, we know that when you are looking at this presentation, um, the references to all the handouts will be pretty small, especially if you're seeing it on a tablet or a phone. And so we know you might not be able to see it, but we wanted to give you the, the visual cue to these handouts so that you could find them more easily in your package. So if you want to follow along by actually taking this handout out of your package, feel free to do so. It's got the little trillium emblem in the right corner saying Ontario. Um, and I'm happy to talk to you about what you can and uh, what you can use your SSH funds for. So before I actually give you the list, um, what's important to note is that at CMHA, we administer the money on behalf of the Ontario government. Um, and so these are their rules. So these are not rules uh, and regulations made by us. These are rules from the ministry and they apply to all families across the province. Okay, so now that you're going to get this funding, what can you use your funds for? So you can use it for uh, mainstream and specialized camp and recreation programs. Um, just regular sort of a week at camp or um, like a dance program for your child. You can use it to advertise to recruit a, an SSH worker for your child. And you can actually use the funds to pay an SSH worker to provide that necessary respite for you as a parent so you get a bit of a break or that worker may be sort of taking your child out in the community or, at, or working with your child at home to work on some personal skill development. You can also use your SSH funds um, for traveling when you're transporting your child on behalf of the worker or to the worker or in that regard. You can also use the money for basic supplies to implement sort of a program for your child at home. Uh, an example of this is you know, purchasing some flashcards. You can also use your funds for membership fees for special needs associations, such as the Special Olympics or the Down Syndrome Association. Um, if your child goes to camp or a recreation program and needs that one-to-one -one support while they're there, you can use your funds to pay for that worker and the worker's time. Uh, you can use your SSH funds for training for a family member so that that um, family member has a better understanding of the child's needs or disability. And you can also use the funds to pay for cost for childcare, but only for children ages 12 years and above. And that's a really key point. Uh, again, Colleen talked about the designation of MFTD, which stands for medically fragile and technologically dependent. Um, and often there's separate funding for children with this designation. And this designation comes from the local integration health network. Um, but nursing can be quite expensive. So if you have a child with this designation, you can use your SSH funds 
uh, for this funding as well. You can also use your funds for routine homemaking tasks. And the key word for this is routine, regular homemaking tasks, such as housekeeping, such as having someone come to clean your house once a month, uh, someone who would maybe prepare food. It would not cover the cost of the food itself, but it would cover the cost of the actual preparation time. Um, if you were paying someone to do that, laundry, uh, again, if you were taking clothing to a laundromat or a laundry service, grass cutting, uh, again, a regular routine task outside and snow removal in the winter. Um, it would not cover things like if you had someone coming to prune your bushes in front of your house, because that wouldn't be considered a routine or regular task. Funds can also be used to cover a gym membership for, for your child who's getting the funding, uh, like the Y or another gym. And this uh, last one is for daycare or nursery school as respite or if recommended for, for socialization. And what I highly recommend for this is that if you're thinking of using your funds for this, that, is that you talk to your coordinator because um, may, it may be a good idea to get some approvals from the ministry before you use this. And again, the key is this for this is it, this has to be recommended for socialization, either through a medical professional, an assessment report, or someone, another professional who's involved with your child. Okay, so thanks very much. And I'll pass it off to Lisa, who will talk about what you can't use your mon funds for. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and as Julie said, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can't use your SSAH funds for. Tutoring and academic programs. Camp fees for siblings. Basic care for items such as clothing, food, diapers and routine medical costs. Other items include one time admission costs for things like movies, amusement parks or museums. Regular child care fees for children under the age of 12 years old. Fees and tuition costs for education and employment. Assistive devices, specialized equipment or home modifications. One to one support in a school setting. And lastly, professional services, including junior and senior therapists. Examples include IBI, ABA, speech therapy, occupational therapy, physiotherapy and behavior therapy. Sports equipment. Electronics, including phones, computers and tablets. For some of the points, you'll notice an asterisk or star. These indicate that there are currently temporary SSAH funding changes for these items due to COVID-19. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in some later slides. So we have some temporary SSAH funding exceptions due to COVID-19. And again, we have a the information in your package. If you look at the right, it refers to the form that's there. And we'll go over those briefly as well. So the following categories of expenditures are temporarily admissible until further notice. And they include things like sensory items, technology, so laptops, tablets, video games, and video game systems. Items to support indoor and outdoor home based recreation, hobbies and fitness activities, everything from craft supplies to sports equipment for outside, all of those types of things. You can use the funding to pay for personal protective equipment, masks, gloves, cleaning supplies, face shields. You can use it for essential service delivery fees, which specifically refer. delivery. It's not talking, however, about fast food delivery. It is allowing uh, behavioral support plans and interventions, uh, not occupational, not physiotherapy and not speech, but behavioral support is allowed under the COVID-19 exceptions. 
and the ability to hire a non-primary caregiver, family members, or a neighbor, friends, to provide the respite. This exception this is, is always been there, um, but they're just highlighting it under the COVID-19 exceptions. Thanks, Colleen. And if you want any more information about this, we really suggest that you go to the Ministry of Children and Social Services website. So you can take a picture of this slide with your phone, or if you can just on a search engine, you can search special services at home um, and you should get this web page as well. We have several different options for submitting invoices and receipts for SSAH. The first one is our newest, and it's through email. So you can submit your invoices and receipts to SSAH invoices at cmhaww.ca. The second option is through fax. And if you look at the front of a blank invoice, you'll see the number located on the bottom. The third option is to send your invoice and receipt through mail. And again, if you refer to the front of the invoice, you'll see the mailing address at the bottom of the invoice. And the last option is for families to drop off in person your invoice and receipt to a mailbox located at one of the following CMHA offices. In Guelph, you'll find the office at 80 Waterloo Avenue. In Fergus, you'll find the CMHA office located at 234 St. Patrick Street East. And in Mount Forest, you'll find the CMHA office located at 392 Main Street North. All of these locations have a mailbox that is clearly labeled SSAH invoices, and that's where you can put your invoice and receipt. Thanks, Lisa. And just letting everyone know, regardless of which option you choose, whether you choose to do in-person, um, fax, mail, or the new e email invoice, invoices are always due by the 7th of every month and the 22nd of every month by 8 a.m. And so it doesn't matter if the 7th or the 22nd are a Saturday or Sunday, those are the dates that they are due. And we really encourage you, if you can, to get them in a day or two before, if that's possible. Um, what we also want to let you know is that after those dates of the 7th and the 22nd of every month, um, they're processed and it takes a few days to process them. Um, and the person who does process them does only work part time. Um, and so it can lead to a bit of variability. So uh, reimbursement for what you've submitted in terms of receipts and invoices will be mailed out to you in the form of a check within five to 10. And it sometimes can take more than that business days. We try our best, but due to COVID and other factors, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Over to you, Colleen. So the new procedure, again, we have a tip sheet in your package. And if you refer to that half page, it talks about how to access it, where to access it. It talks about um, the form being password protected and requiring electronic signatures. And then it walks you through the process to access, complete, and submit it uh, with using a device. Um, it talks in our handout that Adobe Reader works best with computers and Android systems and in at the bottom there, it shows you that the invoice is available um, at that website. Thanks, Colleen. Um, I'm gonna talk about the second invoice procedure or the way to submit invoices. And so in your package as well, you will have a co one copy of this blank invoice. Um, as Lisa talked about, there are lots of instructions on the front and there's a, another full list of instructions on the back of the invoice as well in terms of what to fill in for each of the boxes. There are sample invoices um, in your package as well. If you refer to them at this point, you'll see that the invoice is completed. Uh, there's a number of areas that are very critical. So we need always to have the name of the client, 
the name of the worker or the program that that's involved in providing the service. It's very helpful if you could write your coordinator's name on number two and then indicate where you want the reimbursement sent to. The next box asks for dates and hourly rates and the number of hours and then you calculate that on the line below. So total of each column and then a final total. It asks you to indicate which program you're taking the funding under or what program. For a lot of families, it's only the one program, special services at home. Some families may have the medically fragile, technologically dependent funding as well. And then the, the next two sections, we have to have a parent's signature on every form. And then we either need the signature of the worker. In this case, we're doing it one-to-one -one worker or a receipt from the one-to-one -one worker indicating that they've been paid in order for us to reimburse the parents. And if you want us to send the payment directly to the worker, then we have to have the parent signature and the worker's full address and name on that bottom line. There are some, again, some things that give you uh, hints on how to fill it in on the front, and there's always the information on the back as well. The next invoice is if we were paying an agency, it's filled out much the same but we need either a registration form from the agency camp or a dance program. So we need a registration form and then the information filled in about how you want us or what program you want us to pay it out of, how much you want us to pay, your signature, and then the address, mailing them a check. Or if you've already paid the program, then we need a receipt clearly marked paid um, and indicating that the, somehow the family's already made a payment, whether it's by check or by the internet. And then again, the form fills out and the, your address put at the bottom indicating that you're reimbursing the family. And again, all of these questions are also answered in the, on the back of the sample. And there's also more information in your family manual you know, about how to complete the invoices. At some point, you might require more SSA inv invoices, so here's a few options. You can always contact your coordinator at CMHA, or you can Google www.cmhaww.ca slash SSAH, scroll down and look for invoice for services provided, or you can also search Google for CMHA WW FSO, FSO invoices and it will likely come up. You can also photocopy the blank invoice we've provided to you in your information package. Thanks, Lisa. Um, everyone will have a very big package of information, so this will be one of the first things uh, on the right side of your package, and it's called the SSAH Program Family Information Manual. And I really encourage um, that you, you know, read this manual because as Colleen says, it talks a lot about the program, invoicing, and some other really important procedural things about how you as a parent will sort of be responsible under this program and what our responsibilities are as an agency. Another important um, addition to your package, it's also in the family manual as well, is information about the CHAT program and respiteservices.com. So if you are looking for a one-to-one -one worker for your child, you can go to www.respiteservices.com, the website, and refer to this handout. It helps you walk through how to register as a family and then helps you to search for workers who are maybe available in the area uh, with the type of skills and the availability that you're looking for. The uh, program is, we review the workers, they have criminal reference checks on file, and they've had a, a minimal orientation to, to the CHAP services in order to have their name on that program. Thanks, Colleen. Um, I'm also going to encourage everyone, there's a lot of other information in your folder as well. Um, 
And so I'm just going to encourage you to review when you can all the all the other in additional paper and information in your package, including privacy information here at CMHA, uh, a disclaimer with regards to emailing. Um, there's a process about serious occurrences. So should something happen when a worker is working with your child, uh, this is important information to know. Um, and then uh, child protection information in terms of reporting child abuse and neglect and guidelines about personal care in terms of touch and boundaries um, with regards to working with children. This information is really critical, especially if you're hiring a respite or a one-to-one -one worker for your child. So I would encourage you to review it as a, as a parent or caregiver and also um, facilitate the worker or care person who you've hired to look after your child to read it over as well. And if you have questions about this information, please feel free to contact, contact your coordinator. As a newly funded family, by now you should have or will shortly receive a multi-page letter from the ministry confirming your funding. So this document has some key points. It tells you the amount of special services and home money you have for this fiscal year. So April 1st, 2020 to March 31st, 2021. It talks about your authorization number, which is something that will, your child will always have as they work through this program. And it talks as well about the special agreements officer. So that's the individual who works with your file. Again, short form, we refer to them as, as SAOs. It has their contact information. And that's the person you would have to call if you had questions beyond what we would be able to answer for you. So if you have any questions at all after you've after this presentation and after you've looked at your package, um, you can feel free to call your coordinator. Um, and if you don't know who your coordinator is, please just connect with one of us and we'll make sure you know who your coordinator is. And um, you can certainly take a picture with your phone of this slide if you if you want for ease. Um, Thank you everyone for joining us. I hope this presentation has been helpful and as Julie and Colleen and Lisa have all mentioned, feel free to call any of us with any questions you might have. Thanks.